Congresswoman Capps is receiving the first ever Congressional Advocate Award from ANA. It's very exciting. As a woman, a registered nurse, and a nursing and healthcare policy advocate, she is an incredible role model to me and many others. She graduated from Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington with a BS in nursing. She graduated with honors. She also earned a Master of Arts in Religion at Yale University while working as a head nurse at the New Haven Hospital. She also has a Master of Arts in Education from UC Santa Barbara. She resides in Santa Barbara where she worked for 20 years as a nurse and a public health advocate for the Santa Barbara School District. Lois Capps has been a member of Congress representing the California Central Coast since 1998. She has a long history of working to improve schools, increase the quality of health care, and to protect the environment. She currently serves on the Com Committee on Energy and Commerce. She founded and serves on the Nursing Caucus, has consistently co-sponsored safe staffing legislation, worked on efforts to improve the nursing shortage, and advocates to improve our nation's mental health services, as well as many other impressive accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, Congresswoman Lois Capps. I'm a little overcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, and what a wonderful, warm welcome. Donna Dolinar, thank you very much. Beautiful. Uh, and I can't tell you what this award means to me. I was listening to the accolades, and I was thinking, I'm one of you. And if you could all be members of Congress with me, think what we could do. <laughs> I'm so uh, overwhelmed and honored to receive this recognition from you, my peers. That's the highest tribute, you know. <laughs> and I'm so impressed that you're all here today. Being met at the door, I was told that 900 visits are being planned for Capitol Hill today. Congratulations. <laughs> Your presence will be felt. You will be known in the offices where you are visiting, and that's how we're going to change the face of health care and the face of issues that you care about in this country. You've taken the time from your busy schedules. You've left your family, left your work just for this opportunity to do this kind of work that's so important to us. And it is a pivotal and exciting time in healthcare in our country today. The implementation of the Affordable Care Act is happening. <laughs> and you know, it's not an easy moment in many respects, especially in some areas. In California, we're pushing ahead. Not other, every state is as enthusiastic as California is. But you know what? We have the opportunity to do some profound changes with respect to health care. We have this opportunity to emphasize keeping people well instead of just waiting until they become sick. Moreover, there is a new emphasis on the quality of care, getting people the right treatment at the right time and in a positive manner. And we plan to be measuring the outcomes to help guide our future practice. This is what nurses have been advocating over the years. It is a critical time for our patients. But it's also an area, an arena, where nurses can show the important impact on both individual health and the healthcare system as a whole. We have a lot at stake in what goes on now. And this is so important, especially in light of the recent debates right here in Washington, D.C. 
We are debating big ideas and trying to tackle big problems. But in all that, the impact of the decisions are targeted and individual, and those aren't being discussed. These are the relationships that you have with your patients on a daily basis, and decisions that are so important to our profession, to our patients, to our communities. And that's why it is so critical that you're here at this time. You know what it means for a family to be uninsured or under, underinsured. You know it in very personal dimensions. You know how a lack of prevention-focused care leads to more severe illness in the emergency room. You see this on a daily basis. You know that sometimes something as simple as engaging an individual in their own care, doing a little bit of teaching, can make all the difference in achieving a good health outcome. And yet, so seldom do we get the opportunity to really do that. As nurses, we often advocate on these issues to improve the health of our patients, and we should. But especially in these tough economic times, we need to also be advocating for ourselves and for our profession. There's, we have to wear several hats at the same time. This means holding your individual elected representative accountable for the funding of Title VIII nursing workforce programs. These programs are critical to bringing more nurses into the field, helping nurses climb the educational ladder, and supporting faculty training for our next generation. So there are many, many tasks Multitasking is the, is the, is the hours uh, demand for us. We must also work toward the goals in the Institute of Medicine's Future of Nursing report, including the charge of allowing nurses to work to the full extent of their license and training. We know that this is so critical to bringing high quality care to more Americans at a lower cost. One way to do that is by supporting the Home Health Care Planning Improvement Act. This bill would ensure that seniors and disabled citizens have timely access to home health services under Medicare by allowing advanced practice nurses to sign to order home health services without a doctor's signature. As simple as that and what a difference that will make for us all. I hope that's on your list to talk about today. This bill is sponsored by my colleagues, Representatives Walden and Schwartz, and I'm proud to support it. It's bipartisan legislation. Greg Walden from Oregon, Jennifer Schwartz from, from Pennsylvania, and we need to get behind this bill. It's a common sense measure, but we'll have to fight for it. Similarly, a bill that I've authored with Representative Joyce from Ohio, the R, another bipartisan bill, the RN Safe Staffing Act, will get hospitals to implement a staffing system that ensures an appropriate proportion of registered nurses be on every shift and in each unit of the hospital every single day to guarantee appropriate patient care. This is our agenda. These plans would be developed by the individual institutions. We're giving a lot of flexibility here. There's no reason to object. And it would be done through a committee structure with strong nurse participation. All of this is written in, into the legislation. We know that safe staffing levels affect patient outcomes and nurse retention. Nobody knows that more than you do. But now our job is to convince our legislators that this is the way to move healthcare forward. We know that all nurses, no matter which state they live in, should have access to these pr protections. And I ask you to join me in pushing these legislative pieces forward. At your meetings, tell your representative or their staff what safe staffing means to you. You can do that in personal terms. You can name the individual institutions that they know and that you know. Ask them to co-sponsor this bill. As a nurse, I know that we can accomplish so much when we work together. 
When I went to nursing school, nurses were never asked, this was a long time ago, <laughs> nor, be, nor expected to be involved in federal policy making. That never even came up. But now, we know we have to be, and that's why you're here, and I'm so proud of you. We are the ones who know best how to advocate on behalf of our patients in whatever healthcare setting we are engaged. The best one is you, to come here to Capitol Hill to speak on behalf of your patients to elected officials. We don't often think of ourselves this way, and we certainly don't think of ourselves this way as often as we should. Nurses are leaders. We have a task. We are representing our patients, our healthcare institutions, our communities, our families. And we have an obligation to be a vital part of shaping our society's response to healthcare problems that we see on a daily basis and that we work to resolve day in and day out. And that's why it's so critical to have the input of experienced nurses and your organizations here in Washington, D.C here in our Congress, here on the Hill today. Thank you for coming to Washington. Thank you for taking up this challenge. I'm picturing you going through the halls of the congressional office buildings, knocking on the door, meeting with the representative, meeting with their staff, telling your story, making the case on behalf of the Affordable Care Act, on the behalf of your patients, on behalf of your, your community, on behalf of the profession which we love and are honored to serve in. It does my heart good to see you here. Good luck. And let's keep on working on behalf of our profession. We're never going to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you.